This video is complementary to the written method. It concentrates on critical aspects of the methods important in achieving accurate and reproducible results. For further details, please refer to the printed description of the method. The latter is based on the most up-to-date techniques currently available and was developed by the German VDLUFA. The method has not been previously applied in this form to feedstuff. Regarding the procedures described in this video, all normal laboratory safety precautions must be taken. Additionally, special precautions must be made in relation to the handling of mycotoxins. These include the wearing of gloves and glasses, the handling of spillages and the disposal of contaminated waste. These precautions are also listed in the written method. A wide variety of food or feedstuffs such as cereals, maize, ground nuts, cotton seed and so on may be contaminated by molds that produce a full range of chemicals named mycotoxins. Among these, aflatoxins are toxic metabolites of Aspergillus flavus and Aspergillus parasiticus and have been found in many food products. Moreover, aflatoxins are important in animal health because they may occur in animal feedstuff. When cattle are given contaminated feed, aflatoxins can find their way into dairy foods. Some mycotoxins present a potential hazard to human or animal health, even when present at very low concentrations. Their levels in food and animal feedstuff are controlled by regulations in more than 50 countries. Validated methods for the analysis of mycotoxins are necessary in order to apply these controls and to set standards for trading purposes. Therefore, the Food Analysis Unit of the European Commission's Joint Research Center has undertaken the initiative to validate a suitable analytical method for the determination of aflatoxin B1 in feedstuff. Naturally contaminated feedstuff material with various concentrations of aflatoxin B1 in low PPB microkilogram ranges are the basis for the validation study. The feedstuff contains also commonly used ingredients which might interfere with the detection of aflatoxins. The analysis of aflatoxin B1 is based on the extraction from the feedstuff followed by an immunoaffinity column cleanup step for sample preparation and further analysis by high-performance liquid chromatography with post-column derivatization. When the feedstuff sample consists of compound material or grain, an appropriate milling has to be carried out prior to extraction. Ground feedstuff material may be extracted and analyzed directly. A ground feedstuff sample of about 50 grams is weighed out in an Erlenmeyer flask. It is very important to record the exact weight. The feedstuff is then diluted in 250 milliliters of an acetone water mixture, shaken intensively by hand for a few seconds to achieve a homogeneous suspension, and then shaken mechanically at moderate speed for 30 minutes. Filtration is then carried out through folded filter paper. An aliquote of 5 milliliters is taken from the filtrate and diluted to 100 milliliters in a volumetric flask by using phosphate buffered saline or water according to the specifications for the immunoaffinity column. If the solution isn't clear, it must be re-filtered through a glass fiber filter prior to the immunoaffinity cleanup. If it's clear, it's ready for being transferred onto the immunoaffinity column.
No specific manufacturer's columns are recommended. However, minimum performance criteria are specified for this method. If the columns are not guaranteed to meet these criteria, they must be tested in the laboratory. The immunoaffinity column contains antibodies which are specific to the target mycotoxin. The antibodies are bound to the packing material in the column. They selectively bind the target mycotoxin and remove it from the extract when the sample is passed down the column. The right flow rate is important in order to bond all aflatoxin B1 to the antibody. The column is then washed to remove any other potentially interfering substances which may still be present. Finally, the bond between antibody and mycotoxin is broken by elution with a solvent and aflatoxin B1 in a very pure form is collected. To collect pure aflatoxin B1, an aliquot of exactly 50 milliliters of the diluted sample extract is applied on the immunoaffinity column. The sample is poured into a syringe barrel attached to the top of the column. The solution may be passed through the immunoaffinity column by gravity or a slight vacuum. If a vacuum is applied, the column should not be allowed to dry out. The flow rate should not exceed 3 to 5 milliliters per minute, so the total time for loading onto the column will not be less than 17 minutes. After loading, the column is washed twice with 10 milliliters of water and then dried by air from a syringe or with a vacuum. The aflatoxin B1 is eluted from the column in two stages. Firstly, 0.75 milliliters of methanol is applied to the column and allowed to pass by gravity. The eluate is collected in a calibrated 5 milliliters volumetric flask. After one minute, another portion of one millimeter of methanol is added. In this case, the eluate is collected by applying pressure or passing air through the column after most of the solvent has passed through. This allows to collect most of the applied solvent with the aflatoxin B1 from the immunoaffinity column. The volumetric flask is made up to volume with water and is ready for injection into the HPLC system. As methanol and water contract while shaken, adjust the level after shaking. In case the solution is cloudy, it should be passed through a disposal filter unit. If it's clear, it's ready for injection into the HPLC system. Two hundred microliters of the solution are injected into the HPLC system. The method requires post-column bromination of the aflatoxin B1 prior to fluorescence detection. Bromination can be carried out either using PBPB reagent or using electrochemically generated bromine. The experimental details for both approaches are set out in the written method and are also available from suppliers. Calibration curve should be established by injecting solutions of the aflatoxin B1 standards. This curve, which should be linear, is employed to determine the concentration of aflatoxin B1. After HPLC analysis, the extracts from all feedstuff samples should show a well-resolved aflatoxin B1 peak, free from other extracted components. This is a typical chromatogram from naturally contaminated material showing a clearly discernible aflatoxin B1. Fully automated systems such as the ASPEC system can be used as well. All techniques can be applied, provided the analytical protocol is not modified in terms of volumes of reagents or flow rates for loading and elution.
covered and allowed to stand for 60 minutes at room temperature. Finally, 50 microliters of the stop solution is added to each well. The microplate is now ready for the measurement of the color intensity. The microplate is placed into a microplate reader, a photometric instrument designed to measure the solutions. The intensity of the color of the solution each well is measured automatically at 440 nanometer or 405 nanometer. For this application, the microplate reader uses air as reference. Finally, the printout of the microplate reader and the template with the information about the samples are used to evaluate the results. For further details, please refer to the printed method description.